Is everybody in? Is everybody in? The show is about to begin. Hey, welcome to another episode of Concerts That Made Us. I'm your host Brian and I'm back with another great episode this week. Before I tell you all about it, I just want to give you some updates. So, we've officially launched the Concerts That Made Us store on both Teespring and Teepublic. So make sure you head over there and check out some of the cool designs we have. I've ordered quite a bit myself and I can't wait to get them. And always, you can stay up to date on everything to do with Concerts That Made Us by finding and following us on social media. And make sure you join the TKOK Podcast Network group on Facebook. But now, my guest this week is Bill from The Way Podcast. The Way Podcast is a radio show on Connecticut 91.7 FM. In this episode, we discuss Bill's love of hip-hop and rap music, and delve into the concerts he's been to throughout the years. So, without further ado, let's get on with the show. Hi, Bill. You're very welcome to the show tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. I'm happy to be here. No problem. Glad to have you. So uh, before we get started, do you want to tell the listeners a bit about your podcast? Yeah, sounds good. I'm Bill with The Way Podcast. If you're in Connecticut, FM 91.7 on Wednesdays, 5 o'clock. And I just sit down and talk to experts. Uh, one guest spent seven years in following cocaine in Colombia, wrote a book on it. Recent guest, uh, Uruguay, first prisoner hacker arrested just experts on furious topics tune in for that podcast the way.com that actually sounds really interesting so uh how does it work with the it's, i take it it's a radio show as well yeah it is how, yep how does that work um well since covid the studio has been closed which is why you see me in my room right now I got my bed right next to me <laughs> <laughs> but it's um yeah like i'd go in the studio used to record live on the air but now, because of COVID, it's been closed down, so I just uh, stream, and unfortunately, I can't... Wait, can I swear on this show? Yeah, yeah, work away. Oh, perfect, because on my show, I talked to... Uh, well, since we're talking about music, I talked to Ken Lewis. He is a producer. He's got his 103rd Platinum Gold record the other day. Whoa. <laughs> that was probably my favorite top three easy interviews. Mm. But he was telling a story where he's talking to like Eminem or something, and He's saying, yo, these fucking assholes, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not live, but I forgot to edit that part out. So, yeah, so we had a whole meeting with the organ- organization. And I'm I go into this meeting because I know I'm, like, in trouble. Mm. And I'm thinking, like, they don't got nothing on me. I didn't, I, every episode I critique, I make sure there's not a single swear. I didn't fuck nothing up. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, all right, let's roll the three clips because they got tagged. Yeah. <laughs> And you just hear like the f bomb. You hear everything. You're a oh, shit, man. I'm like, yeah, I can't. Um, I can't pull that off. I can't lie that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll probably be just a slap on the wrist or something, will it? If I fuck fuck up again, it's a six month suspension. Oh Jesus. Yeah, and I, I'm on probation until 2023. Oh man. Yeah, it's a little extreme if you ask me, but yeah, yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> It sounds like you have some really exciting guests, though. How do you uh, how do you go about finding the guests? Um, pretty much social media. Like I don't know exactly how, but that's how I reach out. Like a few guests made a documentaries mm. that I enjoyed, so I just went on social media, looked up their names, shot them a message. Yeah, but mainly like Reddit, Twitter, Instagram is like a great tool for that. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It's um, it's great that these days the world has got a lot smaller. It is, yeah, which also makes it a little more stressful because, like, oh, now everybody's seeing what everybody's doing all the time. Yeah. Like, your friends and family are always posting these crazy pictures and stuff, but no, yeah. the world, that, that's definitely a big perk of it. Yeah, definitely, especially for 
guys like us that do something like this, you know, making everything so accessible and celebrities so accessible. That's how I even got on the show. I reached out to you on Instagram. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Not that I'm a celebrity or anything. <laughs> <laughs> and not yet. Well, I can always hope. So we'll uh, we'll move on to the concerts. How would you describe your musical taste? So I like to listen to um like every variety. I'll listen to like maybe some like rock here or some like lo-fi beats or something, but primarily the I like to lis- listen to modern hip hop rap. Right, right. Cool, yeah, I cool. see you had a lot of people who like to go to old bands and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm more of a modern uh younger generation <laughs> yeah I, I was just gonna say i think you're the the first guest i've had who's more of a has more of a modern taste but um so uh what was the first single or album you've ever purchased um i actually really got into collecting them and that's why i'm looking up right now because i gotta look at them <laughs> right but uh mac miller the circles album oh. uh do you know who mac miller is I've heard of him. I'd kind I wouldn't be too familiar with him, but I'd know the name. He's the um put it like this. I played this album for my grandma who hates like modern music and she loved it. Really? So, like every generation, if you are listening, they hate the modern rap hip hop industry. I recommend Circles by Mac Miller. You you can't hate that album. Right, right. I'll uh, I'll have to keep that in mind. So <laughs> and what's crazy about that album too? is i got it after he died because he passed away yeah and when it came in it came in as this transparent like this like a, instead of like a black or colored disc it's this transparent like glass looking thing that just looks incredible oh man <laughs> so that, uh, that sounds interesting all right your first concert then what what was it and when was it it was a uh, maybe like 2016 i want to say but it was kendrick lamar oh who, cool. um yeah he's uh probably top in the game right now mm. so i was happy that's my first one and this was right when he won the pulitzer prize for his no wait it was 2018 because the damn album came out in 2018 so yeah he just won the pulitzer prize and it was cool because there was a part of the concert where he's up on the stage and there's this whole billboard thing, like freaking 15, 20 feet in the air mm. that says Pulitzer Kenny because Kendrick Lamar, Pulitzer Kenny. And then he goes on yeah. top of it and starts singing from the top of this, like, like very thin, narrow thing. Like he's balancing on. <laughs> <laughs> I take it. He didn't fall or anything. No, no, he didn't. That'd be a different kind of concert then <laughs> yeah yeah different kind of experience how did you uh how did you get into kendrick lamar uh how did i he um he's pretty much the top when people think of the modern rappers or the modern hip-hop hmm. it's always kendrick lamar and j cole hmm. so being in that music industry or liking that kind of music it's just kind of hard to not like like listen to his music and it's very good i enjoy his style a lot so i guess just like knowing the industry or that's how I got into Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. Yeah. I agree though. He's a, he'd actually be one that I'd, I'd know straight off the bat. And there's a couple of his songs. I probably couldn't name them now, but if they came on the radio, I'd, I'd know I've heard them before, you know, they're, they're good. Yeah. I need to collect some of his albums. I don't have any of them. Really? Yeah, I really do. I really have to get that next. They're expensive. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Geez. What is an album these days? Everyone streams. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's weird. They're coming back, but they're like $25, $30. Jeez. For an actual CD now, not vinyl. Oh no. Final. Yeah. Oh, vinyl. Yeah. 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 Vinyl is around the same, same over here. 25, 30 or then of course, the older they are, you know, if you go for the Beatles or Johnny Cash, it could be anting up to 60, 70. <laughs> That's why now that I'm into it, my mom keeps like saying, oh, I wish I had my records because I'd show her some old ones that go for like 500, a thousand dollars, even like the crazy ones. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my parents are the same. Actually, I remember when I was a child, my mother had this huge box with all these old vinyl records i remember one was an original of the grease soundtrack 
from like 1977 or something. But years ago, she got rid of all of them when she got a CD player. Oh, that's what happened to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, if you had to, uh, if you had to pick one song that uh, that stick out in your mind to be linked to the memory of the Kendrick Lamar concert, which would it be? Huh. Definitely from that damn album. That's the one that I probably would buy next because, like I said, that was released very big at that time. Mm-hmm. Maybe, um, maybe the song God, because the chorus of that is like, this is what God feels like. And then he sings mm-hmm. like melody. And at that point, he was like top, he's still at the top, but like he was, he was very mainstream, very everywhere. Yeah. And the whole concert was just like kind of singing that song. It didn't, wasn't anything crazy or special, but just in the time with the Pulitzer Prize and everything going on and it being my first concert, it was just such a nice like song to go with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like a, a perfect fit. I think that whole album, each song had like a one name title. And I think like each title was supposed to be ha- like one of his emotions or something. I don't know. Every artist likes to do their own like unique things, unique spin. But that was supposed to be the unique spin of that album. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I take it. He felt like God with that song. So <laughs> I guess he did. Yeah, he's, he was at the top. And he's, yeah. Um. So the last concert you've been to. When and where was that? I think it was between two. I think my last one, though, I'll have to say was Juice World and um, Ski Mask. And do you know Juice World? I don't. He's um he's like middle upper, but it's unfortunate because he passed away last year because of uh over uh, with the industry, a lot of rappers are passing because of opioids and whatnot. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So he was one of those. And that's one of the reasons I'm so happy I saw that concert because mm. he's one of my top three favorites. And now it's a memory like, wow, I was I got to see him like and the opportunity to, like, uh, won't come again. Like Mac Miller. I'm mm. so upset. I'll never be able to see one of his concerts. Yeah. 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 Geez. That's um, that's kind of makes it more special. You know, you're one of the lucky few that did get the same. Definitely. I kick myself every day. Because I buy a hoodie or like something at every concert. Yeah. <laughs> this concert, for some reason, I'm like, let me save the money. It's expensive. Oh. And I kick myself every day for not buying a hoodie. Oh, man. Oh, but uh, I'm the same. I usually get T-shirts. Uh, they're a must have at concerts. Just a little memento for the for the day, you know. You have to because they become worth more too. like just in like terms of like monetary value even if you cared about that hmm. because you can only get them at concerts sometimes yeah yeah exactly although i'm sure you have it over there as well outside the concerts afterwards there's lots of guys selling like rip off versions of them where you put them in the wash machine and the letters start peeling off straight away yep definitely and that's um i mean i wouldn't have sold the hoodie hmm. but i could have bought it for 60 bucks i think it was and after the news, it was for like $180, $200 online. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was also going to say the industry likes to kind of get predatory with it. Where like this other rapper who passed away. I wanted to buy his album mm. after he died. And when they usually go for $25, 30 thing was like $45, $50. Oh, man. Yeah, not worth that. No, no, it's ridiculous though. They shouldn't be allowed to do that. You know, it's the exact same product. And just because someone died, you know, they're making a book off their debt. It's all they see is the dollar signs with it. Yeah, yeah. That's all the big companies really care about, anyways. The money they don't care about the actual artist or what the artist's going through. I know. It's true and unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. So what was that concert actually like? So yeah, that one was um like again, that was Mac Miller died like a few months before that. So Juice World has this one song called Legends, hmm. which I recommend everybody tune in. That's another one. Like even if you don't like rap hip hop, it's such a great song. Legends, check it out, people listening. <laughs> right, right. We'll have to check it out. But yeah, he wrote it about like how all the rappers and everybody was dying. 
and like how they all fall in the making. They're always dying as they're becoming famous. Yeah. Which is kind of irony because he ended up passing later. And at that time when that song's playing, uh, the other guy who was there, Ski Mask, his mm. best friend uh, died. He was another rapper who died because his name was XXX Tentacion. I forgot how he died. Was it drugs or did he get shot? I don't remember. That's actually one I have heard of. I think he got shot, didn't he? I think he did. Yeah, I think he mm. was shot. Another theme, too. Yeah. <laughs> he, um, and also, yeah, then Juice will became his new best friend and then he dies. So poor guy. But yeah, at the concert, so that song plays and they show like a clip of XXX and people singing along to that. Hmm. And I like XXX, but then the Mac Miller part came up and they show a great clip of him, like just being like a humble kid, like a, just saying he wants to make a name for himself. He wants to like all that stuff. Yeah. So while the concert's playing and while like that's going on, it was just a great moment. Probably one of my favorite concert moments ever. Hmm. Yeah, I, I can, uh, I can really understand that. All right. So uh, it really get to you, really stick in your mind. And it's, again, one of the moments you'd feel special to have experienced it. I know. I almost didn't go to that concert, too, because I had to, like, will my friends to go with me. Oh, no, really? <laughs> but thank God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mac Miller, actually, is he, um, he was he going out with Ariana Grande? No, he was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought that was him. He made an album. It was the Defined Feminine, it was called. And it was supposed to be like with her or dedicated to her or something. But that's when they were dating. Yeah. 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 I knew. I Yeah. She her name popped up when you mentioned him first. But um, yeah. it's kind of a, a running team, as you've said, people in that field of music, they pass away young or pass away before they make it huge. Why do you think it is? I think I think it's a combination of like they come from like these crazy backgrounds or something. So maybe that's rough on them. Mm. But then at the same time, they want to become these rappers. They want to become these famous people in the industry because they want the fame. They want that recognition. They want that to be at the top. Yeah. And maybe that's like doesn't answer the problem they were having so maybe they just still need drugs to feel better or it's it could be that side or it could also be now that i'm at the top let me party get as fucked up as i can yeah. let's all just go nuts every day and it catches up to them yeah yeah that's uh that's a good point it's almost like i always kind of thought it was like a kid who never had anything all of a sudden opens a door and he can have everything he wanted and it's just overindulgence yeah it just becomes too much <laughs> yeah yeah but uh i'm probably completely wrong now but as someone that isn't as big into rap it always seems like those guys just want the fame and the image more so than it's like that matters more to them than the actual music if you get what i mean especially gangster rap it could be also i would say You'll be surprised because do you know who Chief Keef is? I don't. He's um he's another like he's the most street rapper. He's like one of those like real like kind of what you'd ex- uh, expect. Hmm. And one of my guests was Slavic Livens. He's an audio engineer for like a lot of people in the music industry. Yeah. And he w- he was telling me Chief Keef is the most humble, like the most only cares about the music guy in the world. Hmm. And like, if you Google search him or something, it's just not something I would have expected too much. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of refreshing though, when you do hear a story like that, or you do see an artist like that, you know, it's a kind of, it makes you have a bit more faith in the genre or the artists within the genre. It's good to see someone that is there for the music, you know, instead of the, the gold chains and the image and, you know. Yeah, it makes a whole difference because I know, um, like the rapper Six Nine, hmm. um, he's sort of like what you just described though. Where like when I look at him, I don't think he cares about the music, and he was, he was like a uh, one of those fashion guys or something at first, where he'd wear streetwear and like take photos, and the industry 
made him into this rapper. Oh. Yeah, so like you could I see how people enjoy his music, but when I see that I just can't listen to the guy. Yeah, yeah. Isn't he or was he in witness protection or something like that or Yeah, he's also kind of known as a rat cuz he uh likes to snitch on a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That um and yet he's still alive and there's other artists that isn't. It's weird. You'd think he'd have a, a big number on his head. If there was a Deadpool, like in real life, he would be at the top of that. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. But uh I don't know, maybe he has friends in high places. He was a blood, I think, so maybe that helps him out, but then again, maybe with the industry he's got like a money backing, so like just security that protects him everywhere or something i don't know yeah yeah maybe maybe be uh be interesting if they ever make a movie about it yeah they did um another rapper who overdosed uh little peep they made a movie on him like a year after he od'd really yeah he was um not too much my style i did like a song or two of his i didn't really know who he was until after he died but he's been like top 250 on spotify like and it's like four years later i think oh man jeez the one side of like the artist dying is their sales skyrocket yeah yeah they always uh they always reach that kind of legendary status when they die yep definitely so um which uh which song sticks out in your memory for that concert well like i said the uh, legends one just because like that one sticks out more than like the Kendrick one, just because, like I said, he's my he's tied for second place with Mac Miller for my favorite. But it was just such a great like I don't want to say irony, mm. but like it's just such a great moment. You see a dedication to Mac Miller, the guy who got me into music, like the first artist I would listen to. Yeah, it was a great concert. He's one of my favorite artists, and then the fact that I was able to see that song, see that concert. Like, just all made that a great moment. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking it was that song, all right. (laughs) So this will bring us to the worst concert experience you've ever had. (laughs) Yeah, so I guess I'll say, I'll answer that with like two different concerts. (laughs) Okay, okay. So I never have any like bad personal things, but there was a concert I went to and the next day, it was all over the news that they were going to ban rap concerts at a uh, Xfinity center in Hartford hmm. because of all the fights that would break out. Oh. And at that concert, I was like right next, like in the dead center, like right next to the fight at least five times. Cause there were so many fights that concert. It's like, Oh man. I mean, it's, it's entertaining. I'm not going to lie, but I want to see the concert. Yeah. 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 I've broken up fights too at like tailgates, like two or three, but at a concert, fuck that. <laughs> no way. <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. It's, uh, that's pretty wild. I've never actually been to a concert now where a fight has broke out, let alone five. Would it be a, a running team with uh, rap concerts? Yeah. So um, I'm trying to remember what concert that was too. I wish I could remember, but. <laughs> I guess it just depends. So I'd say it could be more of a theme. I've never, I haven't been to any other concerts, so I can't compare it. Yeah. The one outside of rap was like Blink 182, but that was with Lil Wayne. So it still was a rap concert. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So I can't compare it. So I don't know exactly, but they do pop. I've seen quite a few pop up. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I don't know. I'd, uh, I think it actually ruined the concert for me. Even if I was like way up in the stands or anything and I seen people fighting, it, I think it would ruin it for me because it's like you're not here to, you know, fucking act like a jackass and get into a fight with someone. You're here for the show to enjoy the music. You're obviously going to get kicked out and miss the show. So just cop on, you know, grow up and cop on. 100%. I mean, it kills your buzz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, everyone should be having a good time and in good spirits at concert. And that's I that's what I love about concerts too, because I'll see the other side where like 
I'll see so many strangers like just passing blunts around. Yeah. Everybody's just having a good time too. Like everybody's like almost hugging to the music. You're dancing with people you don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's it. It's a real community thing. You know, it's almost like when you're at a concert, no one is a stranger. Everyone is your friend almost. Literally. So that's the, that's the beauty of it though. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And yeah, want me to answer the other concert that I said answers your question? I was just literally <laughs> going to ask it. Yeah. Yeah. So this isn't even like an event. I just spent like $120 to see a Travis Scott concert. Right. Right. Who's like top of the list. And it's a good concert too. But I'm, I spent 120 bucks to be like way in the top corner of this oh, giant man. stadium. I like the guy I paid the money because I want to see a concert. I want to be able to say I saw him in show, mm. but not worth it. Unless you're like Xfinity Center, like the one my, that's my favorite. They have this grass section that's far away. Yes. Yeah. But you're still like with a bunch of people. That's where like everything's happening. You're still having a great time. Mm. But this time you're stuck in your bleach chair up in the corner and it's music that you want to be like moving, dancing. Over, yeah. And uh, nah, I just spent so much money to then like be up there and like just watch this show that I could have watched on my TV at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Jeez, that's uh, that's awful expensive to be all the way back there. What uh, what price is concerts usually over in the states? Yeah, so um, like it depends on the concert too. So like Xfinity Center, mm. uh, like you can get the front down low, like right in front of the uh, artist for. I don't even know, like maybe 150 to like 500 even, depending yeah. on the guy. I always get the $30, $50 lawn tickets way in the back. Hmm. It's a great, I enjoy it. And the whole, it's all like on a slant. So I still can see everything great. Yeah. Yeah. Then, um, like I said, the uh, stadium, that might cost more if you're out in the bleachers. Hmm. So something like that, I'd say like why well, you should spend 30 to $50. I try to. Yeah, But like I was telling you before we were recording on my show, I just recorded an episode with this guy who did a whole research like study on how the ticket prices are like they're all being bought out by Ticketmaster and all these corporations and inflated Hmm. because what the venues want to do is they want to give cheap uh, price tickets so everyone can go. They want those reoccurring guests in the rap, rap hip hop industry, a ton of people can't really afford to get nice seats or anything so they want those $30 tickets so people keep coming to the concerts yeah but what like some of these companies are doing is they're buying out all the tickets and then inflating the prices so sometimes the tickets will be more than like $30 sometimes it'll be like 70 mm. yeah yeah it's, uh, it's really not fair though you know that they do that but it's a business to them they don't really care about people seeing the show yeah you know? and it sounds so criminal and like predatory, but it's also supply and demand because people are going to pay those higher prices. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's crazy to think though, that they're actually able to get away with something like that. You know, if it was any other industry, there'd be, it'd be shut down. There'd be, you know, there'd be uh, stuff there to stop people taking advantage. I know. And I really wish so, because it's so criminal. I hate it. Mm. And they passed a law. It was based off of Bruce Springsteen. It right. was called the Boss Act or something like that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's the actual name. But uh, yeah, like it didn't do anything or it barely done anything. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Over here, um, general admission, most concerts are general, general admission. And it's say anywhere from 50 to 70 is what you'd pay unless it's like a big outdoor concert and it's a big, big act, you know, and then you have the general admission for 50 to 70. Then you'd have the golden circle, which is right in front of the stage. And that would probably be 90 to 110, but that'd be the most, unless you're paying for a three day festival ticket, you know? Yeah. And I, I am, I'm kind of upset because I haven't gone to a festival concert yet. Really? Yeah, there was the New York uh, gover- government ball or gov ball that mm. I really want to see, but then COVID came. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I've never heard of that, the New York Gove Ball. What's that like? It's, um, so yeah, they take like, uh, it's a three day event. Mm-hmm. Last time I looked at it, they had like Eminem as one of the top, Travis Scott as another top, and like someone else. And then they just have just a ton of like artists. So, like, probably like 40 a day or something like that. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's this huge event that I really wanted to see. <laughs> Sounds like heaven. Yeah. And I'm into like, it would have been, but hopefully when COVID passes. Yeah. And then there's this other event that, like I said, I'm into hip hop rap, but I do appreciate like Grateful Dead or like maybe that kind of music, maybe even mm-hmm. Red Hot Chili Peppers, et cetera. Yeah. There is this old event. I forget what it's called. What's like the, when you think of a famous old concert uh, ball from like a hundred years ago or 75 years ago, what do you think of? Woodstock? Yeah. Maybe it was Woodstock or I don't want to say Lollapalooza, but there was a 75 year anniversary for one of those. Right. That they were going to start like, come uh, that they're going to celebrate like it's been 75 years so we're going to throw a the third uh anniversary party or concert for it, whatever you mm. call it yeah and i was kind of excited to go see that because i want to like again it's not my kind of music but i'll still freaking want to check that out but it got canceled because not even because of covid it got canceled because they couldn't figure out the planning or something like that oh man probably all the zoning and stuff like that yeah, and I was fortunate enough that it was nearby, so I could have made it like it was a drive away. It's like a day drive, but still drive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not even as if it's COVID. Like, it's uh, it's not like, oh, yeah, a year's time, it'll be back. You know, unless they can figure out some way to get around it and actually put the show on, you know. Literally. Like, I mean, now you got to wait another, what, 25 years for the 100-year anniversary? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but uh, a show like that, though, it's uh, it's not just a show, it's an experience, you know, and I really understand why, even though it wouldn't be your type of music, you'd want to go just to be able to say that you were there and for the experience, you know, I'd yeah. love something like that myself, even if it was something that I wasn't into at all, I'd still love to go. Yeah, you got to appreciate like every style. Yeah. And I also like looked up just now. I think it was Woodstock. Uh, I think that was the 75 year anniversary of. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That would have been good. That would have been awesome. The, um, you, uh, you mentioned the Bruce Springsteen and the boss act. Actually, it made me think of a funny little story about Bruce Springsteen when he played in Ireland. So up in Dublin, there's a uh, the stadium and it's like, surrounded by houses it's in a really urban area and it's an open air stadium and he was playing there but there's a, a curfew and i think it's 10 10 30 and no act can play past that time they have to sign everything and all saying yeah the show will be over well before then so he's having a great time on stage i wasn't actually at the show now i know people who were and it was all over the newspapers he was uh, he was having a great time playing on stage and this guy comes out and says, you've got half an hour left. OK, yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll finish up. You've got 15 minutes left. Yeah, no problem. You've got five minutes left. OK, OK, Bruce, time's up. You know what? Fuck you guys. Here's a check. I'll play until I fucking want. So, <laughs> you know, I thought it was really cool. It's uh, it just shows like he he can do what he wants. Wow, that's he's a legend for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that actually make me like him more. <laughs> I bet I went to a concert once that was kind of like that, where um, uh, it's actually I'm wearing the hoodie now. The everybody, it's a uh, I saw the concert. It's Logic. And mm-hmm. He just released the Everybody album, which eh, it was okay. Honestly, ever since that album, he's kind of fallen off. Right. His old stuff's my favorite, but like he's still doing okay. Hmm. But yeah, at the concert, at the very end, he's saying like, hey, I'm, uh, it's the end of the time or yeah, like this is the end. Every time I do, you guys want me to keep playing? And everybody's like, yeah, we want you to keep uh, rapping. We want you to keep singing. We, we want to see the concert. Mm. And he, uh, he says, well, too bad if I stay every minute, it's an extra $15,000. What do you think <laughs> about that? 
<laughs> and we're we're like, no, we want to see, we want to see. He goes, all right, all right. If I say I want to leave, I want you all to shout out "fuck you" and put up a middle finger at me. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, what? He's like, so should I go? And the whole concert's going fuck you <laughs> should i go should i go fuck you <laughs> and yeah they was like all right i'll play another song yeah <laughs> he yeah. played i think two or even three more songs after that <laughs> oh <laughs> it's uh it's the experiences like that though that make make the whole experience of going to a concert even better you know it's uh the little little moments like that or even I love when an artist is performing and they'll actually stop between the songs and have a bit of banter with the crowd and you know tell a story or you know invite someone up on on stage I hate I've been to shows before and they just come out pick up their instrument straight into a song that ends straight into another one it's the the little interactions and everything with the crowd that actually make the concert Definitely. That's why that Logic concert is my favorite because there was just so many things like that that happened throughout the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a good one. Especially judging by the end. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It ended on a great no. It was the whole thing. Like that yeah. Kendrick Lamar concert I said before, my first one. Mm. Great time. But I sort of had that vibe where it's like, all right, it's a good show. I'm enjoying it. The end. Yeah. But the Logic one, there were so many offense where like, like I said, at the end, the fuck you part. Hmm. But there was also like one part, one point he has a, uh, he picks up somebody in the crowd to come up on stage and then he starts playing. Uh, what's that old like uh, Mortal Kombat? I think it was Mortal Kombat. Yeah, like the old one, right. like the old Nintendo 60, whatever, whatever it is. I forget the name. And yeah. the, he starts playing the game with like some kid in the crowd and we all like watch the best two out of three. Oh man. <laughs> oh, I've never seen that at a concert. That actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah, there's this big projector, so it's like the whole freaking back of the thing. You just see the match going on. <laughs> Can you remember who lost? Oh, Logic won. Uh he won two out of three. So like the girl, she won one, but he he took the he plays yeah. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> You think just for the uh, entertainment factor, though, he would have let her win. He let her win one. <laughs> yeah, true, true. <laughs> but oh. Then there was another thing where, like, some kid was, like, out in the crowd or something. And, like, he's going, like, what's going on with that kid? Yo, that kid looks like he's on fucking shrooms. <laughs> hey, yo, everybody shout out this shroom kid over here. <laughs> <laughs> So he got nicknamed Shroom Kid and kept getting like reference throughout the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Forever known as Shroom Kid. Yeah. It was trended on Twitter the next day, I think, because everybody kept tweeting like, oh, Shroom Kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised it hasn't uh I'm surprised it hasn't become a meme. Or maybe it has. It was like a little short term. You saw like I forgot some I forgot them, but they were like some short memes are like when you see shroom kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So uh, this will, you've probably covered this question numerous times now, but we'll, uh, we'll move on to your best concert experience. Yeah. So uh, the logic concert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. right, right. And I, uh, I have another question, but I have a feeling you've uh, covered it already as well. The best experience you've had at a concert that didn't have anything to do with the performer. Yeah, so best experience that didn't have anything to do with the performer. So I can't say like the Juice World one because that's the performer. Yeah, true. Ah, uh, shoot, that's a rough one because. So I guess I'll think more in the crowd. It's just, I don't know, maybe. Me and my friends had an edible, so like that just made the concert fun. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but I don't know if there's like a particular experience that I can point to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I can't answer that one. <laughs> okay, okay, it happens, it happens. They are uh, kind of tough questions, especially when they're spur of the moment. Yeah, yeah, but something's gonna come to me like freaking in an hour or two, and I'll be like, oh shit, <laughs> I that was huge. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you'll have to send me an email and I'll have to include it in the outro. <laughs> so this was his best experience. <laughs> It's hard, too, because sometimes you don't remember the full concert, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Um, so we'll get a little more personal now. So if uh, if you could see any performer who's living or dead in concert just one time, who would it be? I'd, I'd have to say Mac Miller. OK, I had a feeling. Yeah, it's just such a great his um his mixtape, the kids album, mm. uh K I D S kicking incredibly dope shit. <laughs> that album. It uh it just really got me into music when I was young. Yeah. I snowboard, so I had these uh head helmet that had a outlet that I plug into and the speakers came out of the earpiece. Oh, cool. And I would just play that album constantly. I know like the lyrics to almost every song. Mm. When he died, I got the uh, re-release a uh, uh, final record of that album, but they kind of took out the kids logo at the top. But I'm still happy I got it. Yeah, but just yeah, like seeing him in concert would just be a great experience. I feel like. Yeah, I could imagine. I could imagine, especially you know, an artist that means that much to you. I obviously have artists that would be the exact same, so I can be. Uh, I can totally understand what what that'd mean to you and if you could get to see him perform just one song at this concert what would the song you really want to hear him sing live what would it be yeah well well first actually i want to say two i'm jealous of my cousin because he got to see him in concert and he's the one that got me on the mac miller train yeah and he uh him or like his best friend no i think he did he was out on the side of the venue hmm. and Mac Miller's like, so it wasn't like as crazy, but his best Mac Miller's best friend came out and like smoked a cigarette with them. and just started telling him all about like answering his questions and whatnot. Like, Oh yeah, it's like this industry and the guy's like this and that. Oh man. And yeah, he's supposed to be a chill dude is what I remember. Hmm. <laughs> but yeah, if I could have a song from him played, what would it be? Um, He's got like eight. Uh, so I guess I'd say a hundred grandkids because that's my favorite song by him. Hmm. And every like wor- every verse he says is just an incredible bar. Right. So it's it's not like a mellow song. He just raps the whole time, but it's just such a great it flows well. Yeah. I love that song. It'd just be great to hear him like sing that song. Yeah, sounds like the perfect one to hear live then. Yeah, exactly. I feel like the crowd would be pretty excited for that song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd say so. So um, I have a feeling about the answer to this one. But if you had to quarantine with an artist, again, who's living or, di- who's living or dead, for 24 hours, locked in a room, who would it be? Yeah, it sounds like I'd say Mac Miller in that case, but <laughs> <laughs> or Jews <Jesus> Roll. <laughs> but in that case, it's actually tied between two. You know, I'll say my second choice first. It's a it's a rapper named uh, Denzel Curry. Okay, he um makes great music. He's my fourth favorite, and I got um two of his records. Oh wait, I only got one. I need to buy the other. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he, I say his name because I watched one of those videos on youtube where like they just interview the guy yeah and he's just such like a like down to earth like humble like he's not nothing crazy or anything he just seems like a normal like person yeah that would seems like he'd just be a great person to talk to he uh he carries a backpack with him to every show and the youtube is about what he carries in it and i forgot man i need to rewatch that thing that was a while ago but it's just such regular like shit you'd see like a down-to-earth person have but like interesting shit oh that'd be pretty cool so he seemed like just a chill dude to talk to but then number one i feel like a lot of people would say this but like eminem (laughs) (laughs) yeah you know i was uh i was thinking a couple of seconds ago i was uh you know he hasn't really said much about eminem i'm going to ask him what he thinks about eminem (laughs) (laughs) yeah I think he's a uh, like he's just insanely talented. I think greatest of all time, but mm-hmm. just 
like his whole story everybody knows it so just yeah. a name like that with the story and as crazy as you see him in interviews and stuff it'd just be great to talk to the dude yeah and he actually seems like uh when he's in good mood he actually seems very very funny <laughs> yeah he's supposed to be yeah very witty and very funny there's some funny clips where like i guess back in his when he was like really famous they'd ask him like questions or whatnot and he'd be like the most flat faced serious person in the world yeah but it's funny because you can tell he's not really like that but he would just answer questions like like they say what do you think about this and he'd be like it's good yeah, yeah and like every question he'd just be like that with like the flat face and so he seems like a funny dude yeah yeah there's a, a clip that always sticks out in my mind of him i can't remember who they're talking about now but it's uh the interview said the interviewer is speaking about this other uh rapper and they're like this rapper said that they were sent god sent them to teach you probably know it do you to teach the world <laughs> how to rap and he's like hmm no, I didn't send anyone. It's <laughs> yeah. like the perfect comeback there is, you know? <laughs> yeah, there's so many things like that. I mean, the guy pro- like has to be a genius, too, with some of the lines he's come up with. Yeah, yeah. That's just yeah. like an example of him sort of freestyling a response. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just so quick and and witty, you know? Be able to think of the perfect response on the on the second. Yeah, and that's a weird thing with, like, Rappers like him or Juice World could freestyle insanely well. Mm. But like people like those two or even other ones don't do well in school. But yeah. at the same time, you can't tell me they're not smarter than like kids that get like 4.0s in high school or like even like top of some colleges. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, it's genius level IQ, but it just they show it in different ways. Exactly. It's sort of like that. I'm sure you probably heard it, but like, grading a fish to climb a tree and a monkey to swim in the water yeah yeah it's that whole thing of nobody really is stupid you just (laughs) have to find what you're actually good at exactly but um it's funny as well you actually you notice some of these guys that are so good at stuff like that but then back in school they could have been dyslexic or you know they weren't uh like we were saying they weren't great at school but they could have actually had a a proper diagnosis of something like that but then they actually are genius level like you yeah like them uh like eminem didn't he drop out in like eighth grade or something yeah i think so i think so yeah so it's just like random and then like a common theme is like i'm hearing like maybe steve jobs or bill gates or like other people are like autism but it's like mm-hmm. a spectrum so they're like yeah there are people like that who are tech or like autistic but they're real smart in other ways, but that's why they didn't do well in school. So it's like, oh, yeah, it, you got to properly fit each person. Each person's different and you're trying to fit everybody into this specific curriculum. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But I think over here anyway, I think the school system is just uh, basically how good can you memorize a book and repeat oh, yeah. passages, you know? And then forget it the next day. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. But uh, it needs to be more practical and opened up to more skills, you know, instead of just memorizing a book and writing out that book in an exam. Yep. In the um, Slavic Living's guest I mentioned earlier, at the end, I asked him, like, hey, what's one thing you want to tell the audience? And he responds, like, or maybe it was like right before that, but he basically says something along the lines of, oh, yeah, what's that question? And he goes, I want people to sort of, look out into music or look into the industry or passion or whatever because mm-hmm. in school you'll never take any music courses really you'll never like take any audio engineering you'll never take any podcasting courses yeah there's like all these different fields that you're sort of never taught but you're taught like calculus that even as an engineer i'm never going to use any of that calculus yeah <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it's kind of it's ridiculous and i remember my maths teacher telling us like you will definitely use this you'll need this every day in your life and i said there's not even five minutes where i've needed you know the only thing you'll ever use is the uh okay i'm at the stop and shop and i got five oranges (laughs) and now let me scan one plus one and now that's five scanned oranges like (laughs) yeah yeah exactly exactly it's uh 
back to back to Eminem then. He's like I've noticed in every genre, and it always happens every generation. Someone comes along and changes that style of music, and they'll be remembered forever. But uh, what do you think rap would be like now if Eminem hadn't come along? I don't know exactly, because when people say like who changed rap, you could like Kanye West. I don't listen to him, but I respect that he was like huge and he changed it more modern. Mm. Chief Keef, he wasn't as big, but people are, people say rappers that use like auto tune now and that style, which is like a new trend, are because of him. Yeah. But Eminem, like being just like one, the, like probably the biggest of all time, obviously had to have changed the industry. Mm. But then again, modern day, it's very sort of chorusy, auto tune and rap, while Eminem is more like pure rap with like he has his choruses, but he's very rapping fast or very word flow kind of stuff. So yeah, I don't know exactly how I categorize. I mean. He was the first like big white rapper. Everybody says that, but yeah, I don't know exactly how he changed it. He just probably, maybe he like changed the whole style into his style, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't like reinvent. He just like sort of like perfected, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Do you think he opened the doors and made it more accessible for white rappers? Probably. I mean, maybe like, you got like people like Mac Miller was a big one. Logic, he's half, um, half white, half black. Uh, Chris Webby, he's from Connecticut, so yeah, represent Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> but besides that, I mean, he definitely had to, so he probably did. Yeah, yeah. Unless, of course, there was Vanilla Ice before him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ice Ice Baby. <laughs> yeah, nobody can actually say his name with a straight face. Yeah, I remember in like high school like early like freshman year i always thought eminem was the first white rapper and yeah. then somebody's like oh no uh vanilla ice i'm like no it was it's eminem it's eminem <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah yeah oh i don't know though you could uh you could very easily forget about vanilla ice oh yeah definitely although he's he's in like movies here and there so i'll be like oh shoot there he is mm, yeah yeah but uh what do you think of Tupac and Biggie then? I think um, the rough thing is everybody likes to say like they're the greatest of all time. And I think they very well could have been, mm. but their careers got cut short. Like XXX Tentacion, people like to compare him to them. And like, I don't think he was ever at their level. Mm. But at the same time, his career was cut short. So it, you never know. Yeah. But they definitely are like those like foundations or like yeah like they're like the foundation or those strong like this yeah the foundation that's the best way to put it of the whole industry yeah. i feel like yeah yeah i completely there, agree yeah there's this one song i oh yeah i just remembered it's a great tupac song with a guitar that i just updated my playlist and i haven't heard it come up because i keep because i forgot to change it but yeah, I don't know. I got I, one of my plans is to go through every album and buy those two artists because they're such big names. But yeah, I haven't heard every song, so I can't even say Eminem's the greatest of all time. Actually, take back, take that back because I haven't heard fully Tupac or Biggie. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, and of course you'll uh, you'll never run out of albums with Tupac because he releases a new one every year. <laughs> yeah he's still living out in uh where is it cuba <laughs> somewhere like that isn't it <laughs> him and elvis and john lennon yep bob marley there too yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh um so the final question then if you had to pick a song to pair to appear on the soundtrack to your life what would it be that's tough because my life isn't over yet still <laughs> that's true that's true still hopefully fall on some big routes uh but let's see i don't know um i don't want to pick any like freaking corny one though i want to pick a good <laughs> one but at the same time 
my Spotify list is 1800 songs. <laughs> <laughs> so in my head, I'm trying to go through 1800 songs. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Shoot. That's a tough one. Um, yeah, I've, I've been hearing that. I'll say a song by Lil Dicky. He's, um, he's a comedy rapper, hence the name Lil Dicky. Right. Right. But he did a good, serious song. Great song called make believe. And it's sort of like him, like trying to be big in the industry, being tr- one of the next names. Mm. And I guess that could be like me with podcasting. Like I'm trying to make everybody believe, or like not make believe, but like, yeah, exactly. Make them like see. That. Yeah. Also, make yeah. believe. Great Juice World song that's been stuck in my head. But yeah, like that's what I would answer that question with. Yeah, yeah, it's a very good answer. So, um, before we go, I'll take a a page out of your book anything you would like the listeners to know um first relating to concerts you made us uh concerts that made us i'd say everybody that listens probably goes to concerts already but uh, keep going to concerts keep like second this all passes by keep enjoying every day because if you keep waiting until tomorrow or the next day you'll miss who that could be the artist's last concert hmm you could miss out on something like that. And I guess I'd like to plug my show too. Of course. That was the next thing I was going to ask you. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, for the audience, check me out at a uh, podcast, the way.com FM 91.7. I just sit down and interview guests, had one guest call in from death row for an episode, had, um, one guy went to El Salvador with the MS 13 and 18 street gangs and Ken Lewis, great music production uh artists so i think people here would enjoy that episode perfect and you're on all the socials as well and yep uh, twitter instagram podcast the way perfect perfect well uh thanks a million for coming on thanks for having me on it was a blast <laughs> well i hope you really enjoyed that episode it's great to be able to explore different music genres now and again if you did enjoy this episode please rate and review us on itunes it really helps the show grow Now I'm really excited about next week's guest. It's a rising country musician from my hometown of Wexford by the name of Copper Kelly. I really can't wait for this episode. So, until then, keep rocking. Hey, hey, what are you guys still doing there? The show is over. It's over. You can go home. Go on. We'll see you next time. We'll be here. Bye.